Jackson R15502017 Review Bulgaria's first supercar is aggressive and unapologetic. It can be tricky at the limit, but it's as engaging as they come. What is it? The Sin R1 is the supercar from Bulgaria, a country without a proud automotive heritage. In fact, there aren't many countries on this continent that could be accused of having a more dire motoring history. The former communist state has been home to a handful of car factories over the years, mostly foreign-owned and almost always churning out miserable tin boxes and joyless utilitarian workhorses, but thanks to the enthusiasm and dedication of one man, it now has a supercar company of its very own. Sin Cars, based in Ruz, on the Romanian border, is the brainchild of Rosen Daskalov. The company's first road car, the R1550, is a mid-engined, V8-powered arrowhead of a car that produces more power than the Porsche 911 GT3 RS. And that's not even the really quick variant. 40-something Daskalov strides around the Sin Cars factory like a man with too much to do and too little time to do it. His phone never stops ringing. He thinks and talks fast, but when he gets on to describing his cars or telling tales of racing them there's a childlike enthusiasm and a boyish laugh. The facade of his sprawling facility in the north of Bulgaria is ultra-slick and modern, the factory doubles up as an official BMW service center, but in the back, where the R1S are built, the place is rough and ready. My father raced cars explains Daskalov, and I raced carts as a child for the Bulgarian national team. I've spent my whole life in garages surrounded by cars. He stopped competing when he left home to study engineering at university, and then went on to set up a workshop. His spare parts operation grew into a successful business, but having worked hard for many years to build his own little empire, Daskalov one day realized he missed racing. I bought a cart in Germany the next day and started to race again, he says. His passion had been reignited. Before long, he found he had an urge to establish a sports car company of his own and, in 2012, Sin Cars was formed. The company was initially based in the UK, but a number of false starts and a parting of ways from a British business partner meant it would be several years before a car was delivered to a customer. Now based in Bulgaria, Sin Cars has built some 20 R1S, the company has a busy GT4 racing program and it's scaring up to produce as many as 30 cars each year. There are more powerful derivatives in the pipeline and all new models on the horizon, too. What's it like? The R1 is based on a custom steel space frame chassis, constructed on site with a heavily reworked Corvette LS7 crate engine mounted midships. The gearbox is a Graziano 6-speed manual, although buyers can also specify a sequential box, while the inboard suspension features adjustable Allen's dampers. The car has a limited slip differential, the brakes are supplied by AP Racing and the carbon fiber bodywork is all handmade at the factory. Daskalov styled the R1 himself. Its 7.0-liter V8 isn't simply lowered into the chassis untouched. Synth Cars replaces the pistons and bearings with higher spec items, adds dry sump lubrication, a bespoke exhaust and Motec management. The result is 542 bhp, 472 pounds foot, 0 to 62 miles per hour in 3.5 seconds and 186 miles per hour flat out. Dry, the R1 weighs 1,300 kilograms. For buyers who want yet more performance, the supercharged R1650 should tick the right boxes. Even with an near 200,000 euros asking price, Daskalov says he has enough serious inquiries to see him through five years of production. He's busy appointing dealers across the world and UK distributor Clayton Kingman is negotiating with sales outlets right now. The R1 is aimed at people who reckon Ferrari 488 GTBs are predictable, commonplace and just a little bit dull. The car's exclusivity and extrovert styling are its key selling points. Beneath a blazing Eastern European sun, the R1 certainly has presence. 
Its snug cabin is neatly trimmed in soft leather and the bespoke seats give a near-perfect low-slung, reclined seating position. The switchgear, though, feels somewhat low-rent. After turning over a few times on the starter motor, the big engine fires into throaty, rumbling life. On the move, the car's thundering V8 soundtrack is as authentic and as evocative as they come. The clutch pedal is quite weighty but the throttle very light, so it's easy to pull away with an unnecessary burst of revs. The electrically assisted steering is very light, too, which means the R1 is no effort at all to maneuver, there are weightier steering modes. The open gated manual gearbox, meanwhile, requires a deliberate hand. With inconsistent springing between planes, it's disconcertingly easy to snag a gear other than the one you were aiming for. Daskolev prefers a softer chassis setup, even for a track-focused car like the R1. Rather than jolting over bumps and staying dead flat in bends, the car feels relatively plush and it dips and leans in corners. Its Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 tires generate massive grip and traction, while the car's balance is so aggressive that there's almost no understeer in the chassis whatsoever. In fact, you can agitate the rear end just by turning in too aggressively. A more neutral balance with a smudge of understeer and a stable rear end would help you to find the car's limits with more confidence, but set up up this way, the R1 will carry as much speed into a bend as your nerves will permit.